This is a new Pyro Flip. Present Pyro Flip. Oh, you're recording? Yeah. Yeah, on camera. <laughs> yeah, this is the. How much half bigger of is the it? new Pyro Flip? <laughs> we didn't start the. the how, how much bigger is the place? It's like three times the size? This unit here is about two and a half, three times bigger, and then the next door is exactly the same size. And all of this stuff was the same stuff in the previous store? Pretty much, yes, but less organized. Not, so th this so. this is past three, three weeks, Periflip has been moving, and all of this stuff that you see here, here okay, okay. was in Palm half the, less than half the space, a third of the space of this warehouse that you're and seeing right now. A lot of props, we're not even carrying them because we're, we're, we're in out of space, so... Now this whole line here, both rows are all. This is stopped. just the prop aisle. This is just the prop. Just the prop aisle. This is the prop city here. It's it was it's unbelievable to see how how all of this stuff was fitting into about a third of the space before. Anyways, it's this has been the reason why Perfil has been staggering on some orders here and there, but they're getting up to speed very quickly, and they're moving we did, forward. We're caught up. They're wow. caught up. They're caught up. So they're they're moving forward now. Okay, so the beta guys from China are here. They're going to I.O., which I don't think I'm actually going to make it there, unfortunately. But they're going to, they're going to I.O., and um, they brought this thing. This is their new uh, Beta 85 type thing with the Tarsier camera built into it. And um, I really appreciated them bringing this because I have a Tarsier camera. I just haven't gotten around to actually using it or testing it because I just don't have the time. So I'll talk real quick about this thing. I'll tell you my, my experience with it up front. So... I am not a huge fan of Cinewhoop style quads just because the flight performance is just so not good. Now, if I spent a month flying this thing, maybe 10, 15 minutes a day, yeah, I would learn to fly it and it would be totally fine. But that's the same, you could be, you could say the same thing about any Cinewhoop style quad. This particular Cinewhoop style quad is probably one of the poorer performing ones. However, the range of performance of Cinewhoop quads is not that wide. The best performing one that I think I've flown has been the Mobula HD. Uh, yeah, the Mobula HD was the best performing Cinewhoop, and that thing still flew awful by my standards because it's a Cinewhoop. Because it's a whoop style quad that's overweight with prop guards, and it has these props on it, and it needs lots of battery, and it takes a lot. Of, it's just these whoop style quads that are heavier than they need than they should be for the style build just don't fly well and this one is no different it doesn't fly drastically worse or better than any other cine whoop style quad it's just unfortunate that it doesn't fly as nicely as i would wish it flew so you're not going to be getting any different performance out of this thing the difference with this is that you get the tarsier camera on board so I'll talk about the quad for a second a little bit more. This is actually using a different stack than what they previously made. It's not using the GEP RC kind of stack board that is an all-in-one board. It actually has a separate 4-in-1 ESC in there that is a 4S 4-in-1 ESC. <clears throat> and by the way, this quad is only recommended on 4S. On 3S, it's really, really underpowered. These are using uh, 1105 5000 kV motors. Th that is a 4S motor on this small prop size. And then it has a flight controller on top of that and then it has the Tarsier boards on top of that and then it has a VTX on top of that which is a 200 milliwatt VTX and it has a genuine uh, FR Sky receiver in there as well <clears throat> so flight performance is not going to be a drastically different than the Beta 85 let's now talk about the Tarsier camera okay so this is kind of a big one and this is something that people have been waiting for and I personally have been waiting for as well because it has two different cameras there's two separate cameras entirely in there which is kind of interesting and uh, I appreciate it because, first of all, I'll talk about the FPV quality. The FPV camera is among the best FPV views I've seen in any FPV camera, which is really, really nice. Specifically because all of the whoop, or sorry, the split style cameras, they all compromise the FPV feed. So it's really nice to see that this does not have a compromised FPV, FPV feed at all. The colors are really vibrant. You can see the highs, you can see the darks, you can see everything really, really nicely. But now let's talk about the HD quality. So the HD quality from this thing is actually not different than you're gonna find on a split camera that exists out there on the market already which is really unfortunate because it does 4K 30. And like I've said in previous videos, just the fact that it does 4K does not mean that you're getting the best quality at all. There are professional cameras that are used by actual professionals for actual cinematography 
that don't even do 4K, that do 1080p, and they prefer those cameras to cameras that do 4K because the 1080p on those cameras often looks better than the 4K on other professional cameras. This is not this is not different than that particular scenario. Just because it says it's 4K does not mean you're getting really good quality out of it. The quality performance of this camera is no better than any other split camera. However, the quality is also not bad. It is also as good as any other split camera. Thankfully, uh, Canax has kind of toned down their crazy HDR on the video, which I personally think is a lot better than the previous ones. I felt the HDR was a little bit blown up, blown out, and I would rather do that in post-processing if I wanted to instead of in the camera. Now, you're seeing a whole lot of jello, and um, that's because I don't have the, the ND filter. There's actually an ND filter that goes over the HD camera, which is the top camera, and the FPV camera, which is the bottom camera. I don't know why it goes over both. It really just needs to go over the HD camera on top. So, um, yeah, that should probably cut down on almost all of the jello, almost all of the jello, if not all of the jello completely. Uh, because this thing is really difficult to fly, I, 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 I can't, I mean, I am not a fan of, of these whoop, cine whoop style things. I think they're just difficult to fly and even though you get HD footage out of it, it's not fun to fly and it's a struggle to get really nice footage. For me, there's a lot of people that get great footage, however it takes a good deal of effort to get that great footage out of it. Now, what you watched right now is the camera with no stabilization on. It actually has stabilization as well, and I'll show you a video of the stabilization on. It has drastically cut the field of view, and that's one of the other main concerns I have with the FP, with the HD view as well, is that the field of view is just not, it's just not ideally as wide as we would like it to be. If I had a choice, I would probably actually make the HD camera tilt a little bit more than the FPV camera like I usually do in FPV. Well, actually, it's the other way. Just because the HD camera is um, a narrower field of view, I would want it to be more tilted than the FPV camera. But in most cases, I usually have the HD camera that's a lower tilt than the FPV camera. So maybe it's not even the best idea to have them both connected as one. Now, there's one other thing I want to point out. This is really like a, like a quick review, but there's one other thing I want to point out. The the Tarsier board is has it, there's there's three beta FPV people here from China plus Sergio plus me and it took us an hour and a half to figure out how, plus I had to contact Albert Kim to ask him how to get the thing to work and actually record. The Tarsier board is probably the single worst user experience split camera or any camera that I've ever experienced because how incredibly difficult it is it has been to use. It is a super finicky board. It wants only specific SD cards. You need to format the SD card in the Tarsier kind of double board stack. You also need to transfer it from the Tarsier board or else you'll run into some issues. I had some like um it, like it uh corrupted my SD card when I was trying to transfer it to the computer. So I had to actually transfer it from within the Tarsier stack. It does have a, a USB port on there. So yeah, do with that as you will. I, uh, I'm sorry I don't, don't give like glowing reviews to, to almost anything. Um, but yeah, that's this for now. It's This is an initial kind of review. I really reviewed it quickly. I didn't fly it too much. I flew two batteries on it. Uh, if I get one, which I don't plan on it, I will do another more in-depth review, maybe if I get around to it, if it's an actual popular product. But uh, as it is, I think I'm going to leave it at that. If you want a Cinewhoop style quad, I wouldn't say that this is drastically better or drastically different than any other Cinewhoop style quad. The Tarsier, the doublet camera thing in here, I think that is actually not bad. I think it is about as good. I like the fact that it has a second FPV camera. At least the FPV feed is not compromised at all. And sure, you get some HD footage as well, which is nice. And that's really the benefit here. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I think that is the actual benefit, that it has a separate FPV camera. Let's just leave it at that. Floss your teeth. Take care. Bye-bye.